All right, who who did this? Who who was this? This is this is a good pasta. <laughs> you know, I was whenever I do a loading screen, I'm always just kind of like sitting here, just like reading chat. Like I could start my stream whenever I want, and I just choose whenever I feel like it. But like this th th this is a good enough pasta to awaken me from my slumber. <laughs> Twisted Fate's balance is strange as beautiful as it is dangerous. Remages gleam in the sun, and pick a cards hide beneath the balance. Cards that could inspire generations if you live to tell the tale. That's a good pasta. <laughs> That's just good. Except it seems to have like a slight grammatical error because you forgot that Twisted Fates is... There's like an apostrophe, so it kind of gets a little confusing. But, you know, apart from that, premium Italian, honestly. I'll, I'll, I'll get out of bed for that one. A good pasta will get me to start my start my actual stream earlier, honestly. <laughs> Two uses of the word balance deduct some points from it too. I agree, I agree. It, 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 should, it should replace one of the first balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Good call. But, you know, no pasta is perfect. This one's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Honestly, don't get me wrong. It was served up on a silver platter. It's not like this was hard. But the thing is, good pastas aren't really hard. Good pastas are all about that low-hanging fruit. You seize the easy opportunity and you take it. You don't really want, like, something convoluted. Most people over-convolute their pastas, you'll find. <clears throat> I remember a few days ago, there were talks of having a chat or podcast with someone at Riot. Did that ever happen, or will it? Let me just see. Is that, uh... It looks like... Yeah, it looks like it'll be happening on, uh, on Saturday. I believe. I believe that's locked in. Hey, can I announce the dev talk thing on Saturday? I hope so, because I just did smiley face <clears throat> we're about to find out <laughs> yeah the, the devs love me um <laughs> this is this is a good pasta though i i will say i will say legends of runeterra devs i i do like i do like how they're they're showing a little uh you know, a little, a little subtle awareness in this. The desert is as strange and be let 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 me deconstruct this. Let me analyze this for you guys, like I'm in fourth grade literature. Okay, check this out, because there's a lot going on beneath the surface here, if you will. The desert is as strange and beautiful as it is dangerous. So this opening line, this thesis statement, if you will, is connoting several different things at once. Saying that it's beautiful, it's alluring, dangerous, low win rate, and strange, you know, it's trying to do a little bit of everything, but you're confused why half the cards exist. Okay? Got it. Salt deposits gleam in the sun, and rare crystals hide just beneath the sand. So this, a lot of you guys have, to have gotten this part. Salt deposits. Which is like, I commented down here, you can see, I, I, I did a Twitter tee hee moment. I said salt deposits. A, eh? I see what you did there, smiley face. But you see, this is this is this is easy. This is easy. Anyone can look at this and be like, oh, haha, ha, salt. Because salt in gamer culture, salt means that it's some degree of like annoyance or, or frustration or general sense of unease. You know, and whatever whatever that may mean. We all know what salt is, and of course they've linked it to Shirima because deserts sometimes have salt. I guess I don't know. So salt deposits gleam in the sun and rare crystals hide just beneath the sand. Here's the thing though. Here's the thing that you guys might not have picked up on. Every single word is chosen with intention. You see, salt deposits gleam in the sun. So what this means is they're in the sun. They're on the surface. You can see them. You can literally see them on this picture. These are the big sh like white areas, the salt deposits. They gleam in the sun. They are apparent and we are talking about them and we're aware of them. But they're mentioning that rare crystals hide just beneath the sand. Now, j beneath the sand means in the future. Shirima is using sand 
as a metaphor for the passage of time, which sand is a metaphor for. That's why Shurimas live in sand, and that's why they use time as a resource with some of their abilities. We can see this in hourglasses. Sands are related with time. Also, one of my favorite Jake Gyllenhaal movies, The Prince of Persia. We know that sand means time. So beneath the sand means in the future, because it's out of sight, where we can't see it, through time, which is the future. And here's a powerful word, just, just beneath the sand. Now we know, as a player base, that there's gonna be two more installments of Shirima. But with this word, they're communicating that the rare crystals, which is to say, the things that we as a player base will latch onto and start to appreciate, start to make us really play Shirima, are hiding just beneath the sand. Which means, in two months from now, a month and a half if we're being precise. This is because if it was beneath the sand, they would be, you know, it, it could be any time. It could be two months or four months. We don't know. But they're specifically saying it's going to be in the next installment. We don't have to wait the full amount for Shrima to be released. The next installment, the one in a month and a half, is going to give us the rare crystals. They are just, meaning, you know, just... You guys know what the word just means. Beneath the sand, meaning right around the corner in the future. You get it? Places that could inspire generations if you live to tell the tale. And of course, what this means is that it's if you, you know, the places, if you're in Shirima, it'll inspire people that are playing the game in the future. So they're, they're saying they're communicating with inspired generations. They're specifically guaranteeing that Rune Terra has a future. <laughs> Places that could inspire generations if you live to tell the tale. So, in, that could inspire generations are saying Runeterra could have a future. Could inspire generations. Inspire generations, you guys know that means future generations. That means people will play the game in the future, but it's could. Places that could inspire generations if you live to tell a tale. So, they're saying if we, as a player base, make it through this slightly dark patch that is Shirima, which is to say, living to tell the tale, they could or would inspire generations. They are promising us that not only if we survive the next month and a half, we are getting our rare crystals, which is to say the Shirima payoffs. They're saying that is hiding just beneath the sand if we last a month and a half. And they are saying that the future of Runeterra is going to be great. G future generations are going to be inspired, but only if we live to tell the tale. Because Shirima is dangerous. All right. That's it. That's that's the subtext. And you guys think that was all like ass pulled from me? How many of you guys think that was just me just like making shit up? No, 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 no. Whoever wrote this, whoever wrote this, planned out every single word of this. Every, like, I, I immediately read this. this. This isn't something, like, it probably seems like I just made this up as I was going along, probably. But the moment I read this, the moment my eyes got fixed on this, I immediately... Like, word for word, I was like, whoa, there's something here. Something is hiding just beneath the surface, you know? This was not on accident. This was a message to the community. Because, you know, the devs, they don't, they don't have a message, right? The devs don't have a formal way of communication right now. There, there's not a dev podcast happening. So whoever was tasked to write this, there was someone at Riot... A single employee at Riot who was tasked to write this. We don't know who they are, but whichever single employee at Riot, whichever intern at Riot was tasked to write the caption for this art, for this tweet, is sending us a message. Because they're not the one on the dev podcast. They realize that the dev communication lines aren't strong right now. And they know that we as a community are starved for information. So whoever this mysterious hero is, is trying to get a message through to the greater community. They are communicating directly to us with every single word of this art piece. Okay? Because they, they can't communicate in any other way. And they know that the dev talk is not going to be for a while. So whoever this is, whoever this is, 
The entire Runeterra community thanks you. You unsung hero. <laughs> Ah, uh, <laughs> it's true. Honestly, okay, come on, guys. Do you guys think that was just pure copium? No way, not a chance, not a chance. That was at most, that was at most 70% copium. There's, <laughs> this is not an accident. This is not an accident, guys. <laughs> I promise, I promise this is not an accident. Memes aside, I think you're right. Look, I'm very serious, dude. Like, you don't just use words like this on accident. <laughs> this is not unintentional. Okay? Ah. Uh, honestly, I love this post. There are literally salt deposits in Trima, though. Yes! It's not- Guys, it's not like they made up the salt deposits. You guys have to understand. Like, if, if, if the post had been about- Camels, then it's not as if you guys, yes, you would be saying, well, there are literally camels in Shurima Swim. Guys, there's many things in Shurima, but they chose these specific things, right? Of course, they exist in Shurima, but we've got to think with our, you know, Bayesian inferences, right? They're choosing the specific things. It's, it's not just like, oh, well, guys, it exists. Therefore, it doesn't matter, right? So I'm trying to educate his chat on subtext when most of them can barely read. <laughs> I did smiley face with a nose swim. Come on. Okay. Kyogre, listen up. Here's what you have to understand. There's something going on about like the specific medium of Twitch, which is like, I know that your comment was sarcastic. I know that your comment was smiley face, but the thing is, you know, it's not, it's not like a conversation that I'm having with you. I have to say it the way that I say it for the benefit of the greater chat, which is to say, you know, kind of ha like how they phrase this, you know, there's all this subtext going on. But like, when, when you say a chat comment, making fun of parodying effectively something that someone could say in my chat, I'm always going to respond to it as if it's an unironic comment. Because, yes, I, I'm responding to the same exact comment, even if you weren't the one making it. The sad reality of the matter is, I mean, I have to make it seem like you were the one making it because that's just like the cleanest way for that narrative to go. But I mean, that's a comment that I'm responding to in the same way that you did. That's just how it goes. <laughs> you should start your politics career. I mean, there's, you, you, you can do a lot. If, if, if you can talk about this tweet for like 10 minutes, you, you can, you can talk about anything. The thing is, you, you you guys are all looking at this fact that I just like deconstructed this and and filibuster this. You guys were saying I should get into politics because I'm a good filibusterer, or you guys are saying that I should get into philosophy because I'm good at philosophizing. I saw someone saying I should get into like you know writing novels because I'm good at subtext. You guys don't understand. This is you guys. I'm already doing this. Not a single one of you guys said that. Swim. You should be a streamer because you're good at pretending like things aren't a waste of time. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, that's the real subtext, baby! <laughs> I'm already doing it! <laughs> oh, yes.